everyone, it's the War Hipster here. Now, today we've got something pretty exciting. What we have in front of us is a Rhino slash Razorback. Now, I'm really excited to do this because this is officially a full contrast for vehicles painting tutorial. Um, now, we're going to be painting this in the, in the colours of the Mighty Blood Angels Legion. I know I say that every single time, um, but that's because, well, this is going to be a tank for me. Uh, and what we're going to cover in this tutorial is how to paint effectively any kind of Blood Angels tank. But these techniques are very much transferable to any kind of Space Marine or any kind of tank that you want to play. As you can see, the door has come off. That is intentional um, because I want to play this as either a Rhino or a Razorback. So, quick point of order before we get started. This tank has been primed with Grey Seer. Uh, now, I know a bunch of you might be thinking, why not just prime it with a Mephiston red can and be done with it? Well, yeah, sure, you could do that, but this isn't what we do here. This is a Contrast Plus tutorial, so we're going to be painting the whole thing with Contrast. That's why we haven't done that. Um, so, and, you know, for some chapters out there, a rattle can doesn't exist, like, for example, salamanders. Um, so for that really lovely kind of pale green, we don't have that kind of rattle can out there. So this is kind of also for you, but it's not a salamanders tutorial, unfortunately. Maybe we'll do that one in the future. So what we want to do is we want to grab our paints, we want to grab our brushes, and then we're going to get started. So before we get started on mixing any colours and getting any layers on, what we want to do is we want to plan our point of attack. So what I mean by that is we want to kind of just study the model first and figure out where our sections are. And this is to help us when we do our big, broad brush strokes that we normally see me do on kind of infantry models and large open cloaks and things like that. Now, with something like a Space Marine tank or a Rhino, you've got three distinct sections. You've got both of the tracks and you've got the central bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the three main ones. Now, what you can also do, you can also divide this down further. So, for example, you can treat this top area as, a, as an entire section, going down to where that light is. We can treat this panel here as a section. We can treat this here as a section. But realistically, you've got those three main ones. And this is important because you don't want to kind of... And what you'll see a lot of the time when you're painting with contrast is a lot of people would kind of just do this and get it all over, and then it's all streaky and horrible. Um, it's the same thing that you would do, right, if you were painting up with a layer paint. You would just kind of mix it with some water and then you would just go, right, time to get this nice smooth, trying, just trying to get this first layer on and then we'll do another one and we're just going to whack it on there willy-nilly and the second layer is what will cover it up. But we don't want to do that here because uh, if we do that, we're going to end up with ourselves a fine mess. So the section that I'm going to be working on primarily is the tracks area because that's the easiest for me to show you and hold the miniature. But obviously, we'll be doing bits and pieces as it comes and calls out. Now, this track area is divided into a couple of sections. So we want to ignore this bit and we want to ignore this bit for now because we are focusing on the outside armor. The section that we're focusing on, you can see we've got that lip here in the, in the armor. That is the end of this area. So we want to keep that recess as our kind of guide. We don't want to go over that. Otherwise, we've got the door, we've got the two exhaust, and then we've got kind of this area. We've got the flat area that starts around here, and we want to bring it around until we get to around about there. That's our halfway mark. So we're going to divide it into two. So we're going one, two, three, four, five. Does that make sense? Now to actually show you what we're going to do. So, Rather than using the Blood Angels Red straight out of the pot, we are going to thin it down with a bit of contrast medium. And rather than just kind of going for a full straight on contrast setup, we do need to layer it up a little bit, but not very much. So what we want to do is I'm going to be using a medium shade brush. Now, this brush is pretty much perfect for doing these kinds of things because we get the same principle that I get from a medium or a small layer brush. But instead, it's in shade brush form. And the technique is roughly the same, regardless of of those kinds of brushes. When you start kind of using bigger brushes or uh, base brushes or things like that, it gets a little bit trickier because you've got a much wider surface area on some brushes. Like for example, this is a really ancient 
medium dry brush, but you can see it's really wide. So you don't want to use something like that. And kind of the medium layer uh, base brushes, they're kind of similar to that. So what we want to do is we want to thin down some paint. And what we want to do is we kind of want to do roughly two to one of contrast medium to Blood Angels Red. And this is just to give us, well, basically to make the paint a little bit runnier and a little bit weaker in order so that we can control it and layer it up. So we take a brush load like that and we pop it down on our palette. So that's one. And then we take another brush load like that. And that's two. Then we wash the brush because we don't want to get more contrast medium in there than we want. And then we take our brush, make sure it's a bit drier than that. Don't want loads of water on this because you'll contaminate the paint. We take our brush load of Blood Angels Red, around about that much, and we mix it in with that contrast medium. Like this. Now when we're applying this to the model, we don't want our brush to be dripping. We want our brush to kind of be sort of like this. And now we're going to tackle it in those sections. So what we want to do is I'm going to start with the big section because, you know, no guts, no glory. So we want to keep the paint moving and we want to move in big, broad brush strokes. So we're making contact like this and we're just going to start going for it. Like that. Now I'm being gentle with the brush. I'm not being rough with it. I'm not pressing too hard. I'm going to try and keep to the tip of the brush. Like this. Go back and grab a little bit more paint. And we'll do a big broad brush stroke going down like that. Like this. Keep going. Another big broad brush stroke. Once again, make contact and a big broad brush stroke. Now the paint is a little weak, but don't worry, because we are going to do a second layer of this. So we're going to reach the halfway point of that section. Like that. So I'm going to wash that brush off. And then I grab a slightly smaller brush, a wind, uh, kind of medium layer brush. And I'm just going to use this now to just kind of feather away any of the really dark or scratchy spots that we've got. We actually haven't got too many, which is really good. Got a little bit of one here, a little bit like that. Jolly good. I'm just going to load the brush up one more time. I'm just going to keep going. Like this. So we'll go back to our medium shape brush. And it's at this point that my paint's looking a little bit like it needs a little bit more extra medium. So I'm just going to take a little bit more medium and thin that down on my palette a little bit more. And I'm going to continue doing what I was doing. Getting those nice big broad brush strokes with this thin brown paint for lots of control. And as I say, this is only layer number one.
with that first layer of Blood Angels red and contrast medium applied, it is going to look a little bit patchy and a little bit weird. So you can see that it's quite a nice smooth finish up here, but over around here, there's like a that drip where it was a bit too thin. So what we are going to do is we're going to cover over this again, but we're going to use the same mix once more. So we, what we want to do is we want to, like I say, one part medium to one part Blood Angels Red. We want to just make contact with the model with our large brush and just start pulling it down all over the top like this. We can be a little bit more kind of bold this time because we've already got our first layer on there. A bit of detritus there. As you can see, it's already starting to smooth out and kind of really put in that richness of the Blood Angels Red that we're, that we're kind of used to. Like that, you see? And with that second layer of Blood Angels Red and Contrast Medium applied, as you can see, it's looking pretty smooth and pretty good already. But there are a one or two little splodgy mistakes that we want to get rid of. And these, you know, they're absolutely going to happen when you're using contrast on vehicles. But don't worry, we're now going to fix it. So what we're going to create is we're going to create a roughly 10 or 11 Depends on your preference. You can runny or really you just want it to be really runny, but 10 or 11 parts contrast medium to one part Mephiston red glaze. And this is going to be just really thin. It's almost like or almost like water. And what we want to do is we want to apply this over the top of these mistakes. Like this. Just avoiding the recesses and the edges. And with that Mephiston red glaze applied to the side of the tank, as you can see, we've got a really nice, smooth, lovely finish. And I've done exactly the same thing on the opposite side. It's still drying a little bit at the moment because I've only just finished it. So, there we go. That's how you use contrast for flat open vehicles. But we're not done there. We are going to paint the rest of the tank. And we're actually going to use another technique. Because if doing lots of layers, or well, in this case two layers of contrast medium in Blood Angels Red plus a glaze is not part of your, you know, ideal flavour. What we're also going to do is we're going to look at something called pre-shading. And pre-shading is something that I've done quite a lot on the channel, particularly when I'm doing black. And this is how you get a much more, kind of, a really kind of smooth finish on darker colours as well, by basically doing a heavy layer as smooth as possible. But... Um, a, a, a pure contrast layer of, for example, in this case, Griffhound Orange, in order to give the Blood Angels Red something to cling on to when you apply it to the place that you're trying to do it on. And so what we're going to do is we're actually now going to paint the front of the tank. And so once again, we're going to lay out our sections. So we've got this little bit here and this little bit here. We've got the front panels and that kind of is almost is in two sections. So you've got one and two, and that's denoted by the fact we've got this line here, which is perfect for where contrast can run into. We've also got the central reservation, and then we've also got the, the door, and we've got these top bits here as well. 
Now what we're going to do, as I say, is we're going to do a pre-shade layer first. And the colour that we're going to use is Griffhound Orange. Now I'm using a medium layer brush, but you could once again use a big layer brush to do this. So what you want to do, realistically, really, is you want to, again, take it section by section. You want to make contact with the model, and then just in these big, broad brush strokes, like this with the Griffhound Orange, pull the Griffhound Orange all the way across that section. Just smooth that out a little bit, just being very gentle, making sure we've got a good coverage of this Griffhound Orange all over this section like this. Like that. So we'll do it again, just inside here. We're gonna grab a fair amount of this on our brush and we're gonna make contact in here. I'm just gonna put it across in these big broad brush strokes. Same again, just wanna put a little bit of that off, Pull a little bit of that off, smooth that out a bit, using the tip of my brush and being very gentle with the paint. Big broad brush strokes, like this. Grab a little bit more paint. Start by a recess and just start pulling it round. like that. So we just want to go all over this front section. We're leaving the top. We just want to go all over the front section like this and then we'll come back. And with that Griff Hound Orange applied, what we now want to do is effectively want to just reenact the process over the top of that Griff Hound Orange, only this time using some Blood Angels Red. So once again, we grab a fair amount of this on our brush and then we make contact with the model and we start just pulling it over where we've applied that Griff Hound Orange. Like that. And just smooth it out a little bit using the tip of our brush. Like that. Similarly again, down this section, pulling it out. These nice big broad brush strokes. And then just kind of smoothing it out where we've got that much darker bit. But just being really gentle. With the brush. So we're going to keep going like this until we've coloured in the hole of the front. And with that layer of Blood Angels Red applied, you can see, well, it's quite smooth already. Um, but in terms of the tonal difference, it's looking a little bit too orange on here and between that side of the of the of the of the of the tank. So what we're gonna do just to help with that, we're gonna do yet another layer of Blood Angels Red in the same application. So we just wanna once again make contact with our model with our layer of brush load of Blood Angels Red. And we wanna just put it out. Like this. Across the armor panel. With that second layer of Blood Angels Red applied, as you can see, we've got a really lovely finish. However, it is a little bit patchy over here. 
and so, and a little bit patchy on this side of the red. Oh, there's the door. Yeah, we don't need that right now. Anyway, so what we're going to do is much like we did on the side door, uh, the, the side of the rhino on both sides, we're going to create our roughly 10 parts contrast medium to one part Mephiston red glaze once again. And we're just going to use this all over. the flats of these parts that we just painted, just leaving those recesses as they are and leaving those edges as they are. Like that, just to smooth it out. And with that Mephiston red glaze applied, as you can see, the front is now finished. So all that's left to do, as out of interest, I've just finished off, well, it's still drying, but the uh, the back has also been done in that same Griffhound orange way of doing things. Just, you know, I've got a whole tank to paint here, guys. So with that done, all that's left to do is the top. Now, as you can see, it's not primed in there because I'm not gonna ever have something in there. All that's left to do is the top. Now, the method for doing this is exactly the same as what we've done on both the sides and the front, and indeed on the back, even though I haven't shown you the back. The back is exactly the same anyway. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide which method we're gonna do. I'm gonna do the Griffhound orange one again, um, just cause it's fun and it's a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, and so what we do is we divide the model up into the sections. So the sections that we've got on the top are right, left, this back area, the top part of the turret, the, where the kind of these, these turret things are or these hatches are, and of course, whichever door you want to do. I have, of course, got both doors. I've done this one in the method that I did on the side, and this one is going to be done in the method that I did with the Griffhound Orange. So that being said, all we left to do is to grab my Griffhound orange and start painting it all over these sections in the same way that we did on the front. And so what we do is we take our bit of Griffhound orange on our brush and we pick our section to start. And I'm going to start up here on the top and well, I'm not going to hold the miniature. Uh, we're just going to start brushing it on in these nice big broad brush strokes. Like this. Just making sure I'm covering over all those rivets because it's really easy when you're doing the, this this kind of method for applying contrast to just kind of miss those crucial little bits around areas like a rivet. So rivet just parts the bristles, uh, bristles, Bruss the bristles of your brush, not the bristles of your brush. So when you're going like this, what ends up happening is you end up leaving a little white or a little gray sear in this case, a little gray sear chip above it, which isn't great. So I'm going to turn this guy around so I've got better access to this area. Like this. Like that. So you just want to keep going. So 
can see even whilst I'm doing the edges of this kind of turret section, I'm still trying to keep a hold of doing that one little area. Because I want to focus on getting this bit done. Because as soon as I start sort of like half doing sections, that's when it just gets, it, you just lose control of the contrast. So if I kind of was to sort of get halfway on here because I was just brushing it a bit manically, then I came back even about 10 minutes later when it was dry uh, or drying, I'll either disturb the skin of the contrast paint creating those little dark streaks and things or you get this kind of like you know like highlighter pens or highlighter markers you get that kind of effect of it just kind of doubling down on 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 that color so you, you that's where you then develop those darker blotches so what we're going to do here is we're going to start here by the rope I'm just going to pull it out, these big broad brush strokes, have a little bit more up by the rope, big broad brush stroke. And with the roof done, well, would you look at that, some really lovely smooth contrast painted tank armour for you, how's that? <laughs> oh, I'm so very pleased. I think it looks really cool. But we're not finished there because now we're going to put that door to one side and we'll take that one off and we'll take that one off too. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to add some highlights. Now, there's two ways that you could do this. You could laboriously go around it and highlight each edge, or you could do a dry brush, which is what we're going to do. So, what we want to do is we just want to uh, investigate on our very, very cluttered desk as to where our Fire Dragon Bright has gone. Um, hmm. Let me come back to you. As you can see, I found my Fire Dragon Bright. It was lurking in the corner. So what we're going to do now, as I say, is we are going to do a dry brush. Now I am using a small dry brush. And the reason for that is I want loads and loads of control as I do this. So what I want to do is I want to very, very, very gently use this dry brush now to catch the edges of the tank without getting any of this in like a streaky horribleness going across those flat panels. I'm just going to take my time as I do this, just going back and forth across the model with that fire dragon bright. And there you have it with a dry brush of fire dragon bright. Well, that armor is finished and it's beautifully smooth. It looks lovely. And I'm really, really proud of it. If you want to like kind of strengthen up any of these highlights, you absolutely can. We're not going to do that just now because um, there's occasionally the little rivet that I might have missed. You can just use a little bit of Fire Dragon Bright just to, you know, just do a little, do a little dot on top of it. But what we are going to do now is we're going to move on and we're going to paint the black details. Now, I'm going to remove this uh, turret just for the sake of ease. Uh, probably won't see that for a little while. Um, actually, before I do. Uh, <laughs> so the black details. The black details for this tank are going to be this area here. This ooh, uh, is going to be uh, this um, uh, the, the the doors on the top there. We're going to do that little bit of the turret. We want to do the storm bolter. We want to do the heavy bolter casing as well as this part of the turret here. Uh, what we also want to do is we want to do the um, Aquila on the front because Blood Angels and we also want to do this back section here now the reason I've left this here is because well I wanted to do a large open space um, in black as well uh, I know that's not very large but um, you get the point so <laughs> what 
what we're going to do is we're going to start much like when we did this top section of the tank and the front section and the back section you're going to start with a pre-shade rather than kind of layering up the black templar now the pre-shade we're going to be using is basilicanum gray and you'll have seen me do this before if you've ever watched my how to paint the order of our martyred lady battle sisters um, video or the triumph of saint catherine or various other ones um so as i say we're going to be using some basilicanum gray and what we want to do is we just want to get this basilicanum gray all over now when using when doing this what we want is a really dark lovely black so actually we don't need to worry about this being too smooth what we do need to worry about is too much pooling because that will take ages to dry and it'll start to clog up the recess particularly on an area such as this but i don't need this to be really smooth so as you can see just being a little bit cavalier Although we've got a reasonably smooth coat there, it's a bit streaking. Um, so we're just gonna, just under here, just very carefully. Like that. Same again on the other side. The useful thing about not having that door on means I can hold it. Just getting a nice big dollop of Basilicanum Grey on my brush and then covering over. And because it's gonna be such a dark black, it doesn't really matter if there's a little bit of a mistake. Obviously, if there's a really kind of massive blob of red, that will matter a little bit. So just correct it before you do this, but obviously there's little scratches, it really doesn't matter because the black will cover them up. But if there is a large, large dark spot, I should explain, if there is a large dark spot, what will end up happening is that when you put the black templar on, it'll look kind of inconsistent. So you'll have a darker spot in the in the in the large dark in, in the black area. So yeah. Anyway, there we go. We've got our both our both our back bits done. So now I'm just going to continue on painting in these black details, and with that basilicanum grey applied to all those areas that we now want to be black, what we are now going to now do is we are now going to grab our black templar. And we're going to get off. <laughs> Just makes life harder for myself. Oh, nearly, yeah. Anyway, what we are now going to do, as I say, is we're going to grab our Black Templar. And we're now just going to paint this Black Templar all over the top of that Basilicanum Grey. Like this. And with that Black Templar applied to those details, as you can see, well, they're, they're pretty much finished. I mean, like, you, you could add a bit of a highlight to them, but honestly, in, in most of the places, it doesn't need it. Like, you see the contrast is already taken care of that area, and the areas around the turret is taken care of. The only place we might need to do it is here on the, on the top roof hatch, but we won't do that now. What we will do is instead we will focus on doing all the silver details. So... What we'll do is we'll take some thinned down iron warriors and we're just going to start coating this over everywhere that's silver. So areas like these little exhaust pipes up here and the working areas of the gun. Storm bolter. And areas like these little antenna. And of course the tracks as well. And with all that iron warriors applied, what we're now going to do, we're just going to finish off doing some metallics for now, before we do any shading. And the colour we're going to use is some thin down retributor armour. And we're going to use that on any of the gold details that we want to be, well, gold. So I'm going to colour in the little skull here on the front. And I'm also going to colour in the little winged aquila here on the storm bolter. And with that retributor arm applied, we're now gonna get really messy and we're gonna use some basilicanum gray to sh shade all of that silver and gold. So we just wanna take the basilicanum gray on our brush and start painting it all over. Now, there's no exact science to doing this, but 
you know, as usual, just take your time. Make sure you don't get this all over that red armor that's already been painted and just go steady. Don't use loads at a time because Basilicolin and Grey can get away from you pretty quickly. So if you just like overload your brush and you go straight to the model, what will happen is you'll spend most of your time trying to kind of peel it off with the brush. And you'll end up with like kind of basically losing any of the any of the shade that the metallic has added. Now, unfortunately, after a um, cat-related incident, this Rhino slash Razorback tutorial has become a Razorback tutorial after the cat chewed right through the door. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to continue on painting because all of our Basilicanum Grey is now dry and all that shading is now finished. So, as you can see, the tank is looking pretty awesome. So what we're going to do now is going to use some Saigal Brown and we're going to use this to paint in this large cable. And once again, I know you probably think I'm mad, I'm not even holding the model. This is just because this is the best angle for you to see what I'm doing. So as I say, just getting a nice good coat of that Saigal Brown all over this big cable like this. This could be any colour that you really wanted it to be. Um, I was originally going to do it Black Templar, but then I thought there's already quite a lot of black on this model, so let's just make it look like really, really, really big rope. And with that done, what we now want to do is we want to colour in all of those little screens and lenses and things, and the colours we're going to be using for this are two colours, Telesada Blue and Leviathan Blue. And basically what you want to do is, I'll just take the turret off to do this, is you basically want to take the Telesada Blue, like this, get a sizable amount of it on your brush, and you just want to basically cover over the whole of the gem or lens like that. Very simple. Now you could just leave it like that, but we're not going to. What we're going to do is just grab a slightly smaller brush. That one's too small. And this one, and then we're just going to grab a little bit of Leviathan Blue, not loads, and just add it in. The bottom parts of the gem like that and with all those blues added what you now want to do is take some yand and yellow and use this all over the headlights it doesn't have to be too neat around here because you know the light shines over the top plus we haven't done any highlights on there yet and once we do You'll basically redefine it anyway. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Skeleton Horde. And this is going to be for the large papery bit here. You just want to get this. All over. And with that done, what we're now going to do is highlight all that silver using some thinned down iron hand steel. Now this bit will probably take the longest, but there are some tricks you can do to speed it up. So for example, on all of the smaller details like this, you can just do an edge highlight like I'm doing here. Like that. Whereas on areas like the track, you really don't need that kind of precision. So you can just dry brush it. And with those silver highlights applied, it's now time to add some black highlights using some administratum gray. And with that black, well, with that administratum grey highlight applied, well, the vehicle is now finished. Um, there's a lot more that we can do, which we are going to, um, such as battle damage, just to make it a little bit more visually interesting. Because at the moment, it looks like it just rolled off the assembly line, which is fine. 
but I don't want it to look that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some transfers. Now, I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. Um, if you want to see how to do transfers, you can check out the How to Paint Outright, Blood Angels Outriders tutorial that I've done as part of the Indomitus series. So anyway, I'm going to add some transfers now, and then we'll come back. And with our transfers applied, as you can see, we've got our tank looking a whole lot more, well, Blood Angels-y. There's no mistaking who this guy belongs to. Right, now that all of that is done, it's time to do some weathering. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to take some thinned down Mephiston Red. I'm going to use this to make those transfers feel like they're more a part of the tank than they currently are. So we're just going to remove the turret for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this thinned down Mephiston Red and we're just going to take little chunks and little chips out of our transfers. Like this. Just randomly placing these little lines. Just to kind of, as I say, just make it feel a little bit more like it's part of our weathered tank. Yeah, this guy's seen a bit of action. Or at least that's what he's going to look like once we're done. And with that done, it's now time to add some chipping. And so we're back to contrast here. And what I've got here is I've got an old medium base brush. Now what I've done with this is I've snipped off the end of the bristles, you see? And this creates a nice stippling brush and it gives me a much smaller thing with which to control. This brush has had a lot of love. Um, but yeah, basically take a really, really old brush and just kind of just snip the ends off until you get like this really short, short little brush like this. And this will, as I say, give you a stippling brush. Because what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be adding some dirt and we're going to be chipping the vehicle at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our bit of kitchen roll and we're going to take our new stipple brush that we've just made and we're going to grab a small amount of Saigor Brown. You don't want loads. And then what you want to do on your kitchen roll is you just want to start dabbing it onto the kitchen roll like this until you get the kind of dispersion that you want. So you see how it's gone from really kind of dark and splodgy over here to quite light here. And just make sure you twist the brush around just to make sure that you, 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 you've not got like a big bit just hanging on the end here. So then what you do is you take your tank and then you just start doing exactly what we've just done, but doing it on the tank itself. Now be gentle because you don't want to overload all that lovely paint work that you've just done but effectively what you want to do is you want to build this up around any areas where you want there to be chipping so in this case we absolutely want there to be chipping around those tracks because all the dirt and all the stones and stuff that kicks up as a tank drives it just damages the paintwork of course so we just want to do this pretty much all over these areas like this. You can take it further up, but just keep building it up. like I'm doing here. Again, just keep, always do it in this motion. 
the stippling motion. Because if you if you start doing this, you kind of ruin that effect, and you'll get these lines all over it. And we don't want the lines, at least not just yet. And with that Saigor Brown applied, move that out of the way before accidents happen. Uh, with all that Saigor Brown applied, well, as you can see, we've got a nice grimy tank now. I've done quite a lot there at the back. And we've done some on the side here as well. And all across kind of around a bit like areas like this. So in order just to finish this off, what we're going to do is we are going to take the Iron Hand Steel. And we're going to do much the same thing that we did before with the same brush. We're just going to take a little bit of Iron Hand Steel, not loads, like that sort of amount. And we're just going to start stippling that onto our kitchen roll once again. And we just want to get it until it looks the way we want it to. Now we don't want this to be as heavy. So what I'll do is I'll show you here on the on the door. Is we want to just very lightly add a little bit like that. Not very much at all. Got a bit of cat hair there. See, it says it's nowhere near as heavy as what we've just done. Similarly up here, we just want to like that. And sometimes all it takes is literally just one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and one, two. Like that. It just kind of really breaks up that side or brown, but it also just looks like where some of the chips are slightly more severe. In amongst all that dirt. And so we want to put that together. As you can see, it looks somewhat like that. So you just want to go over all of these. Again, just being very gentle. So like one, two. One, two, three. A bit more. Bit there and with all that chipping applied well our tank looks suitably beaten up and dirty and so well we're nearly very nearly finished nearly very nearly <laughs> what does that mean anyway what we're going to do is we're going to add a few little cuts and gouges just to the to the armor and so the color we're going to use is we're going to use some black templar and now what we want to do with this is effectively we just want to draw in some little bits of random damage anywhere where there might be a little cut or a little scrape or say like someone tried to have a pop at you you could like do like a little bullet hole so just use this black templar like this just put it in random places Like this, just adding a little bit more damage to our, this noble machine. And also just do little gouges, little lines. Uh, Here, a little line just there. Like this, and there's just not a real exact science to it, it's just entirely up to you how and where you put this stuff that you would expect quite a lot of it to be around the doors where the griblies are trying to get in and with those nicks and scratches applied 
What you now want to do is take that same high co highlight color that you dry brushed your vehicle with in the first place, so in my case, Fire Dragon Bright, and you just want to add a little bit of a highlight to each of these. And you can really just place this wherever you uh, wherever you like. But just don't do it around the whole of the of the uh, of the of the scrape. So I'm gonna do it like that down the line. Like that. This just gives you that 3D effect. Like this. And with those little gouges all highlighted, well, your tank is now suitably weather damaged and looks amazing. And yeah, I, I think it looks brilliant. I hope you I hope you think it looks brilliant too. This has been a real work out for the contrast paint so far I mean, it just yeah i'm really 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 pleased with how this has turned out all that is left is to give it a name now when doing these kinds of things it's really 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 handy if you pick a name that has an odd number of letters and the reason for this is because it's much easier to place the text on somewhere like like a large open thing like this or like on a nameplate on a, on, a, on a Space Marine's arm or something. So words like angel or wrath or uh, angry, you know, just because they've got that an odd, an odd number of letters. And the reason for that is because you want to start from the middle. So what you can do is if you, for example, if it was angel that we were going to name this, we would want to draw in the N in the middle. And then we know that we've got to do an A. And then, sorry, not the N in the middle, the G, I can't spell apparently, the G in the middle. Then we do an A, then we do an N, then we do an E, and then we do an L. So, what I think I'll actually do is I'll call this guy, uh, Steve? No, uh, let's just write Wrath on the side, because it's nice, and uh, yeah, it's cool. We can call our, this is the, the Razorback of Wrath. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our contrast paint and we're going to take our Cygore Brown. Now I've got a, uh, this is a Wargamer Insane Detail brush from Army Painter. And so, because I want loads of control here, so I don't want to use loads at a time. So I want to see where the middle point is, and that's around about there. There is a hair on my brush. Let's get rid of that before we do anything. So these bloody cats, honestly. Anyway, Wrath. It's going to be W-R-A-T-H. So we know that we want to put the A in the middle. And that looks roughly the middle to me. So I'm going to just draw out the letter A. Like that. That looks fairly central. So I know now what I've got to play with in terms of room. This is going to be my A. Like that. Next up, I'm going to go this way. So I'm going to do my T. So I'm going to put that right about there. And I'm going to draw the, the cross. And I'm going to do my H. Have a little bit more cycle brown. Like that. And now I'm going to go back the other way. So I'm going to do, do in my R. And I'm going to do in the W. Like that. So I've got the word wrath written on the side. Now, if you want to make this look oldie woldy, a really simple way of doing that is to basically 
do the same thing again, but just do it next to it. So you basically, on the H here, draw a line going alongside that line, like that. And do it again there. And then do another one going across, like that. Same on the T. Draw another little line going next to it. Like this. And you just keep going. You see, it's already made that H look oldie woldy. So, how about it? And there we have it. One contrast painted Razorback. It's a shame that those Rhino doors are no longer, but I think you'll agree the finished article is even better as a Razorback. I absolutely adore this. I, I think it's come out so, 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 so well. Um, and yeah, I think it's looking peachy. You know, it's... Yeah. It's tough to put into words. I'm so pleased it worked out. And, you know, it, it, as, I, as I've said to a lot of people, it's a continuation of the Blood Angels Outriders tutorial. And, well, just a bit bigger. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support me further, like these legends on the screen, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Do all of that good stuff. And if you want to be kept up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.